Hello students, in this short video, I shall be discussing a simplified approach to the PAPS three-step test. I have been receiving messages from many students saying that they are unable to comprehend the PAPS three-step test and apply it to solving MCQs. So in this short video, I'll just try and sort out this problem for you. But before we proceed to talk about the PAPS three-step test, I just want to revise a little bit about the extraocular muscles and their basic movements. So first, let us look at the elevators and depressors of the eye. The elevators of the eye are superior rectus and inferior oblique. The depressors of the eye are inferior rectus and superior oblique. Now, this is something I know most of you are aware of, but in order to understand the Parkes three-step test, we have to know something more. We have to understand in which position the rectus muscles and oblique muscles function best. Now, when the eye is in a position of abduction, the elevation and depression functions are done by the rectus muscles. But when the eye is in a position of adduction, the elevation and depression is done by the oblique muscles. So, what does this mean? This means that when the eye is in a position of abduction, then the elevation is done by the superior rectus and the depression is done by the inferior rectus. But when the eye is in a position of adduction, the elevation is done by the inferior oblique and the depression is done by the superior oblique. Now, keeping this in mind, what we are going to do is we are going to draw a grid. In this grid, we will try to represent the muscles according to the position in which they act. So, if you look at this grid here, the first box represents the muscles of the right eye according to their position and the left box represents the left eye according to the, the position and the muscles according to their position of action. So, see, when the right eye is in a position of abduction, the elevator is the right superior rectus, whereas the depressor is the right inferior rectus. But when the right eye is in a position of adduction, the elevation is being done by the right inferior oblique, whereas the depression is being done by the right superior oblique. The same thing we have written for the left eye also. In a position of abduction, the elevation and depression is being done by the rectus muscles, whereas in a position of adduction, it is being done by the oblique muscles. Now, having discussed about the elevators and depressors of the eye, I would now want to discuss a little bit about the indotors and extorters of the eye. Intorsion means inward rotation of the eye, whereas extorsion means outward rotation of the eye. The easiest way to remember which are the intorters and which are the extorters is the mnemonic SIN, which stands for superiors are intorters. So basically, the superior rectus and superior oblique are intorters and the inferior rectus, inferior oblique are the extorters of the eye. Now, we will try to see what happens when we tilt the head to one side, that is either to the left or to the right. Now, when we tilt the head to say the right side, what happens is because of the tilting of the head, because of the tilting of the head, the right eye extorts, the right eye extorts because of the tilting of the head and the left eye intorts. This is not because of the eye muscles, but because of the tilting of the head. So when the right eye extorts and the left eye intorts, in order to maintain an equilibrium, what needs to be done is that the intorters of the right eye need to function to maintain an equilibrium. Likewise, the extorters of the left eye need to function. So, in order to maintain an equilibrium on a right-sided head tilt, either the intorters, both the intorters of the right eye and the extorters of the left eye have to function. So, keeping this in mind, what we'll do is, 
we will take up a question and try to solve it with the Parks three step test. A patient presents with left eye hypertropia, which increases on right gaze and left head tilt. The question asked is, which is the involved muscle? So let us go to the first step. The first step is to understand what is left hypertropia. Left hypertropia means left eye above the right eye. Now, though conventionally we call it as left hypertropia, left above right, left eye above right eye may mean either left hypertropia or it may also mean right hypotropia. So, left eye hypertropia means paralysis of the left eye depressors. At the same time, right eye hypotropia means paralysis of the right eye elevators. So, left eye above the right eye may have two implications. That is either the left eye depressors are paralyzed or the right eye elevators are paralyzed. Now, let us go back to the grid that we had drawn. So, when we say that the left eye is above the right eye, this means that either the depressors of the left eye, that means the depressors of the left eye or the elevators of the right eye are paralyzed. So, see, out of these eight muscles that we have in the grid, we have narrowed this down to four muscles. We have narrowed this down to four muscles. Now, the next step says that this is worsening on right gaze. So, this is worsening on the right gaze. So, I will just draw the circle to represent the muscles that we had already narrowed down. So, we had narrowed down to these four muscles. Now, the question says that it is increasing or worsening on the right gaze. Now, if it is worsening on the right gaze, then what does this mean? So, we have to now understand that out of these four muscles, which are the muscles acting in the right gaze? So, the muscles acting in the right gaze are these two. The two muscles on the right side are these two. So, it is the right superior rectus or the left superior oblique. So, with the help of the right gaze, we have now narrowed down the four muscles to two muscles. Now, the question says that it is worsening on left tilt. So, it worsens on the left tilt. So, as I told you, when you tilt the head to the left side, the left eye extorts and the right eye intorts. So, to maintain the equilibrium, the intorters of the left eye or the extorters of the right eye must function properly. Right? So, we had narrowed this down to these two muscles, right superior rectus or left superior oblique. So, from this we understand that either the intorter of the left eye or the extorter of the right eye must be dysfunctional if it is worsening on the left head tilt. But if you look here, we do not have an extorter of the right eye, but we have an intorter of the left eye, which is left superior oblique. So, the muscle that is paralyzed here is the left superior oblique. So, the answer to the question is left superior oblique. So, you see, it's actually not very difficult to come up with the answer. Let us try one more example. The question number two is, a patient presents with left eye hypertropia, which increases on the left gaze and right head tilt. So, left gaze and right head tilt. The question again begins with left eye hypertropia. So, our step 1 remains the same. So, in case of L by R, we know that it is either the depressors of the left eye or the elevators of the right eye which are paralyzed. But here, the question says that it is worsening on left gaze. So, out of these four muscles, let us see which are the muscles that are going to worsen in the left gaze. So, if it is a left gaze, then the muscles which are acting in the left gaze 
which may be involved in this are either right inferior oblique or left inferior rectus so out of these four muscles we have now narrowed it down to these two muscles that is right inferior oblique and left inferior rectus depending on the fact that it is worsening on the left gaze now the third step the third step says that it worsens on right head tilt so these are the two muscles that we have narrowed it down to and the step 3 says that it is worsening on the right head tilt so see in the right head tilt the right eye extorts and the left eye intorts so to maintain the equilibrium either the intorter the intorter of the right eye and the extorter of the left eye have to work well but if this is getting worse on right head tilt it means that either the intorter of the right eye or the extorter of the left eye are not functioning properly but if you see here we do not have an intorter of the right eye but we have an extorter of the left eye so the answer is left inferior rectus like this you can apply this logic to whichever problem that comes to you in mcqs we just have to follow the three steps and this basic methodology that we have discussed in this video so i hope this video is going to help you answer whatever questions you might get about parks three step test in the exam if you want to connect with me further this is where i am available you can connect with me on my telegram chat group and for daily mcq practice and discussions you may join my facebook group thank you very much